Hey everybody, I am here at the wet spot with Cameron and we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, big dumb cichlids. So stay tuned. Okay, so these guys are near and dear to my heart. I kept one of these for many years and I loved her dearly. So these are chocolate cichlids and please tell us more about these little love bugs. Well, not always, but I have <laughs> tell beef us more. with this fish. <laughs> Uh, they beat up my lemas. <laughs> On the other side of that. <laughs> that aside, uh, chocolate cichlids are large. They're very pretty. Uh, they kind of remind me a lot of like weird severums in a way. Yeah. Uh, we'll get larger, both species of them. This is going to be temporalis. Uh, these guys are going to get about eight, nine inches long. Beautiful fish. Chocolate is often a fancy word that you'll see in the pet hobby to describe something that is brown. <laughs> uh, but these are beautiful. The marbling on them that they'll get when they're larger is quite pretty. The red and green that they get, two of them, I believe that one of the other common names that seems to have fallen out of favor is the emerald cichlid for these guys. I have kept these before as adults and they were stunning fish. Did they beat up my catfish? <laughs> yes, but are they a very otherwise reserved, peaceful cichlid, very graceful, but sturdy enough to hang with bigger, meaner stuff? Yes, of course. They're really, really cool cichlids. One that I think probably gets overlooked because they're not always available. When they are, they tend to be fairly reasonably priced. And of course, when they're small, they're kind of a pale tannish. Yes. Uh, definitely one for somebody to grow up and really enjoy. It shouldn't be something that only those, quote, in the know uh, would know about. A really I, great cichlid. Their eyes, I think, for me, are what sold it. I looked it up, even though these little bland-looking cichlids, mine was two inches when I got her, but she grew up to be a burgundy brown color and have blood red eyes. She was absolutely beautiful. So just keep in mind guys, patience with fish. It really helps. All right, so these guys are actually uh, kind of a favorite of mine. And even though they're a really common fish, uh, I feel like you just don't see them that often. So this is the blue acara. Tell us about these guys. And of course they're hiding a little bit. Sorry, yes, everyone. Uh, so this is Andino acara pulker, formerly Aquidens pulker, the regular, so to speak, blue acara. Uh, these were the thing that was kicking around that everybody really loved and should still before the electric blue acara was a thing. Maximum size about six inches and sturdy is how I'd describe them. Uh, definitely feisty enough to put things in their place. Only get about five, six inches long, so not too bad even if they do have a bad day, decide to start fighting with somebody, but also just not overtly mean. The spangling on them when they're large is incredible. It's a beautiful fish. It's one of those ones where again, they're commonly found they're pretty reasonably priced wherever you find them, so I think they get overlooked a lot of the time. Can they work with something like silver dollars? Yeah. Would they probably work with large angelfish? I don't see why not. Uh, beautiful, just beautiful fish. You just got to give it a little bit of time. Very easy to spawn from my understanding, so a very easy one for bat points if you're into that sort of thing. And uh, memory serves, either that or I've tricked myself and will continue to trick myself. I uh, believe in the nature, these guys come from Colombia, and I think they might also be native to Trinidad, which is really weird. Might be flubbing that one, not positive, but just a nice cichlid. It's a it's a standby, we'll say, and it is for a reason. It's, it's a, a very, very good fish. solid fish for my like memory, and I really enjoy these guys a lot. And like you were saying, the spangling, insane. Don't rule these guys out; they're overlooked all the time. Okay. I don't think we could do a segment on big dumb cichlids without these guys. <laughs> Tell us about these. Uh, this is Heros liberifer, the red belly or ice spot severum, or as I prefer to call them, Heros liberifer, the book cichlid. <laughs> uh, I love this fish. It's, we'll say understated. I do like severums quite a bit. Have some of the uh, Inerita severums myself at the moment. I have kept this fish. I actually spawned them once. I kept them in the dark for a week and they decided to lay eggs. Didn't get past the wigglers, but that was kind of neat. Uh, these guys have a distinctive kind of broken bar down near the tail. And they do come by the red belly name very earnestly. When they're adults, they have really nice contrast to them. Body's kind of this greenish brown that's very attractive. And then the red in the breast is really, really pretty. A uh, little bit more laid back than some of the other Severums as well. These guys were uh, doing great swimming out here with the silver dollars before we decided to shine a light on them. Uh, but pretty reasonably sized fish, maybe eight inches maximum. It's just a really cool one. It's not one that you see very often. It's very rare to see these tank raised. I really like these guys. I think more people should take a shot on them, especially those that might be a little tired of your average, like gold or green severum. Very, very nice fish. And of course, the really neat part is they are uh, mouth breeders, which is fascinating. Well, I may have spoken too soon. Here is the king of the big dumb cichlids. What are these guys? <laughs> this is the Oscar. So this is Astronotus <laughs> ocelotus. Uh, it's really neat. If memory serves, they recently described a couple different species of Oscars. It's one of those cases where, like, 
I've been in the aquarium hobby as someone who's worked in it, as somebody who's been obsessed with it for a long time. So it's one of those cases where, again, you, you overlook it. A lot of people, Oscars are almost viewed as like a starter fish. It's like, yep, kept it as a kid, didn't keep it super great, kept it in 55. Uh, Oscars in a 55, of course, is a very powerful thing. Uh, they're big. They're dogs. They're called water dogs for a reason. They're food in nature. But there's still a lot going on with Oscar. I mean, how many people have spawned an Oscar? You know, for those watching, like, there's a lot of good fish keepers out there. Not a ton of people take it upon themselves to spawn the humble Oscar. Yes, they get big. Yes, they can beat up on stuff. Yes, they can frustratingly be total cowards. Uh, at least a lot of the tank raised ones, although some of the wild ones can be very shy as well. Uh, it's always a frustrating moment when a Jack Dempsey beats up on one of these and they decide to play dead or when they play dead after a water change. But they're popular for a reason. I mean, they have personality, they have color. Even if it's not your cup of tea, it's really hard to look at that bright red, that black, that white, and say, wow, that's not a lot of color. Wow, that fish isn't swimming actively. I mean, it's really easy to train them. They're pets. They're pets in a way that appeal to a lot of folks that might not always view ornamental fish as a pet. So they're a really good bridge for those folks that would like that. Of course, you do need a really large tank to keep these successfully long term. Uh, you do need heavy filtration, they're messy, but they have their place. They should have their place. It's a good fish that unfortunately isn't always cared for the best. And I think that at the very least, if that can be a learning moment for a bunch of folks and also a springboard to get them into other fish, of course, that's great. And if you love Oscars, because you love Oscars, if you're an old salt and you just really like those things, <laughs> that's fine an Oscar. Who hasn't kept an Oscar other than me? Never actually kept an Oscar. I actually think uh, they're just one of those fish that you start to dislike them because of how mistreated they are. It has nothing to do with the fish because they have amazing qualities. Oscars are really cool fish. They honestly are. All right, so these are some of my very favorite. I'm a big fan of Satana Perka, so what can you tell us about these guys in here? Uh, I can say that they're a wonderful fish. I can say that they can certainly be a tricky fish for a lot of folks. Uh, many people have kept the ram an earth-eating cichlid, so to speak, microgeophagus. Of course, these aren't geophagus, they're satanoperca. Uh, on that biotodoma that's lurking around in there. Hello, little waffroni. <laughs> uh, that's funny. These are great fish. They are peculiar fish. They're kind of tricky fish. They're great fish that have, unfortunately, some drawbacks, but I think that for those willing to take them on, they're incredible. So in here, we have satanoperca daemon, the spotted demon fish, fellows with kind of like, I always think of like kind of like a bird-like head. Spots on the body do get pretty large, can get at least 10 inches, although they're very slow growing. Uh, color on them when mature is magnificent. The dorsal fin extensions are crazy. They're very difficult to breed. If memory serves, need very soft pH, very hard to keep weight on these guys to get them to spawn by dint of, you can see them right here eating some of the flake that I might have fed a little bit uh, excessively here. These guys in nature would occur often over soft sand in areas where there's some degree of flow, where there might be some leaves. They sift all day long. And of course, a lot of us in aquariums know that if you don't stir up your substrate for a very long time, or if you have very fine sand, it can get compacted. You can have sulfur dioxide build up. You can have a lot of bad stuff happen. And they get big and they like to school. So there's a lot of things going on for these fish. But they're so worth it, just so, so worth it. They're gentle as lambs, would only eat something very, very small. It's not a fish that eats other fish, unless something's dumb enough to wander into their maw, like, I don't know, an ember tetra, <laughs> but an awesome fish. They're really in demand for that reason. We also have, of course, the lone Biotodoma wavrini, little Orinoco earth eater, stunning fish, kind of like a giant Bolivian ram, gets about three to four inches long. And of course, these other fellows in here that I'm gonna assume are Satanoperca mapiratensis, I say that even though they look just like Jurapari because these did come in together. Oftentimes they'll be exported mixed together, which is very confusing. Um, the Puritensis often will come from Colombia as opposed to the Jurapari, which often is exported from Peru. Uh, the Jurapari types like Mapiratensis are typically a little bit sturdier, a little easier to keep, but all wonderful fish. Uh, definitely something to be seen in like a 125 in a large group with some soft sand, maybe some angel fish. Again, very gentle fish. Not really aggressive, but certainly there's a few things here and there. And what I'll also point out, especially for, of course, those non-local customers, online customers, my apologies, these are wild-caught fish. These ain't really tank rays. So will you occasionally see encapsulated parasites that look like ick, that look like black dots on these that do, in some people's opinion, mar their beauty? Yes, these spots on these mapiratensis down here, that's not ick. I promise you, it does not respond to treatment. It ain't ick. It's just an encapsulated parasite that responds to the water parameters from the waters they would have come from. 
extraordinarily difficult to deal with and oftentimes over months or years, yes, the fish's immune system will take care of that. Uh, not something to worry about or be alarmed about, in my opinion. I keep a lot of wild caught fish. I deal a lot with encapsulated parasites, but just something to keep in mind that you will occasionally see that. And it is, it's natural. Like many things, it is part of nature. It does, again, in some folks' opinions, detract from the beauty, but it's something that does unfortunately come along for the ride here and there. Not something to fret about. I've kept many that look just like that. All right, so again, we're going to come back to another Satanaperca, more Jurapari, but I, I just, I kept these and I really love them. So let's, let's hear more about them. Of course. So these are Jurapari, come from Peru, uh, at the risk of beating a dead horse that's well, well deep into the ground now. We'll say that, of course, standard large earth eater things apply. Keep them in groups, give them plenty of space, keep them clean, preferably on soft sand. I know we don't have sand with them here, but of course this is temporary. They will go sooner than later. Strongly recommend feeding them multiple times a day, and in case you think you can get clever and feed them really big food, that ain't how their pharyngeal mill works. Don't give them a piece of krill and be like, this will fatten them up. Please try to give them multiple small meals a day. I know we're all human, we have busy schedules, but it does tend to beef them up nicely. And for those not impressed with the cool look, uh, these develop incredible spangling as they age. This is very, very far divorced from what this fish is gonna turn into, and you can see a little bit starting it's just going to be more intense as they age. It's an awesome fish. Everybody should want to keep these, even if it's maybe not a reasonable goal for everybody to have such a large tank for them. They're well, well worth all the quirks, in my opinion. Yeah, I really loved them. They're great. And mine was about eight inches, and she would not hurt a fly. Sweetest fish ever. All right, so these are actually some of my very favorite fish. I'm a big fan of geophagus, but I'm an even bigger fan, I think, of gymna geophagus. And this is the Balzani, and I've kept large groups of these. I really enjoy them. So let's hear some more about these guys. So gymna geophagus, Balzani, or uh, the Balls and I, not to be confused with the production, the King and I, uh, is a very nice fish. Uh, gets a, the head's so weird, man. I can't get over the head. I'm not personally the biggest fan of oh, nuchal humps. Oh, the nuchal hump. <laughs> uh, these, a lot of the time, especially on smaller ones, it'll be translucent. So it looks like it's like blew a piece of bubble gum up and then stuck it on its head. Uh, no matter what your feelings, it is indisputable that as these age, the color, uh, the color on any gymnogeophagus is insane. Yes. Just all of them, just incredible, just rainbow spangling for the most part. Don't get too large, maybe six inches. Uh, I will point out that it is frustratingly uncommon for us to see given geophagus in the hobby because many of them come from uh, Uruguay, southern Brazil, parts where it does get chilly and many people that keep these very well and that breed them a lot recommend a chilly period and definitely not a heater. Balzani, we do see a lot more in the hobby because they will occur more northerly, they can tolerate some heat, but do keep in mind you don't need to keep these guys nice and toasty. Uh, they're also a lot easier to keep nice and well fed than say like a satana perker or some of the other earth eaters so good news there uh, i don't want to say pushy not the right adjective but they can certainly hold their own uh, very very nice fish say you have a mixed 75 gallon or 125 gallon of just a few laid back central or south american cichlids keeping them together these are a really nice showpiece and just a really nice fish in general even if i'm not the biggest fan of some of the morphology it's a really cool fish and i think it's really nice that of a very underappreciated genus that there's at least one that lends itself a little bit more to more home aquariums because it's a really, really neat fish. I kept a nice group of two males and three, or excuse me, five females, and I, the males would spar all the time, but they never hurt each other. They're really peaceful for being, you know, the type of fish you wouldn't necessarily think would be. All right, so I'm actually a really big fan of these fish. I've never kept them, but there was one that I was uh, having a bit of a love affair with for a while before I moved. So please give us some more info on these guys. Uh, well, to put it confusingly, I don't know what to think about this fish. <laughs> uh, and why I say that is these are quite shy uh, in the presence of dithers, plenty of big dumb swimming silver dollars or catfish or even angelfish that I've actually kept these alongside. Uh, they were still very shy, but so when they turn it on, they can wail on something. A little bit unusual, but I will also throw out that a lot of the time for folks, this fish is a showpiece. It's, they are planning a tank around these, and I can certainly see why. Even if, yes, they're a little shy, the look is bizarre. It's fantastic, that big parody kind of beak to them. These do get large. Uh, there are Huplarchus that have gotten easily 14 inches. There are reports of up to 18 to 20. I've only seen one close to that size once. It was a very, very old specimen. I knew that for sure, just based off of how the fish looked. 
but the green on these is stunning. The personality, these are another one that can be very pet-like, even if they're a little uh, quirky, I'll say. Definitely one that can be very, very difficult to spawn, so one on the bucket list for a lot of really serious cichlid enthusiasts, but it's a really neat fish. Cool pattern, not often seen, fantastic morphology, just one that I frankly need to keep again. I need to get a better fit for these guys, but just knowing that I would have to dedicate quite a bit of space. Uh, don't let any of the oddness turn you off because this is a really, really cool fish. And the nice part is these aren't anywhere near as large as I've seen them come in, and they are pretty slow growing. So if you don't have a massive tank right now, certainly something at this size, you got plenty of time. But very, very interesting fish, certainly a little bit more out there, but definitely one for the really serious enthusiasts. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There are big, dumb cichlids, and I couldn't love them more. Cameron, thank you again so much for all of your knowledge and information, and we will see you guys next time.